Hi everyone, today we're going to learn how to make these really cute rocking chairs on your Cricut Maker machine. We're going to use the Cricut Maker, the fine point blade and housing, Cricut brand craft board, and I use the green mat for my craft board projects. These rocking chairs perfectly complement all the other furniture in our series, especially the carved single bed frames. I tend to buy the multi-pack of craft board. And that comes in three colours, black, brown and white. And the brown can end up having a, quite a wood-like effect if you use varnish or superglue on it. And you'll have seen that in the single bed frame. I'm going to use white craft board for this tutorial. Here I've cut the first part, the first sheet of craft board for the rocking chair. You can see there I'm cutting four of everything, um, five of the seats, um, and so in 12th scale I used just over one sheet of craft board. Some of the pieces you'll find just need a little help to release them with a knife. It's mostly cut all the way through, but if you just take a craft knife and go around the line, it should come out pretty easily. So here are all the pieces. The brown one I made earlier, and you'll notice that they've got a really nice long rocker on the bottom and a really traditional shaped arm. Remember to keep the hearts that are cut out of the back piece to stick on for extra embellishment if you want to on the top of the frame. If you keep the arms attached to the back and fold them round, it creates a really nice twist in the wood. But on this tutorial, I'm going to show you how, if you want to, you can slice the arms from the back of the frame and you glue them on perpendicular and you just get a slightly different look. It's up to you. The construction is mostly the same. So just decide if you want the twist or the flat back. We also have extra pieces on the arms and the rockers that you can build out to make them look wider. You can stick them just on the outside or on the outside and the inside and that creates the nice extra depth. And the good thing about that is if you make it and you still want to add some more you can literally just keep adding them until you get the exact depth that you'd like. The rockers are slightly different, they're more rounded at the front end and more pointed at the back, so there's definitely a front and a back. And again, you can do the same as with the arms. Put extra layers on the inside or outside or both. So here we're going to cut the arms off, sounds very drastic, <laughs> but if you don't want to do this then just twist them round. The other thing to note is that the cross struts, there are the front ones are longer and the rear ones are slightly shorter. So make sure you've got those all matched up. And that just creates a slight taper to the rocker. So I use my ruler on the long edge there and press down and that keeps it very secure. Literally just follow the knife down the edge of the side of the back frame there and very lightly chop the arm off. and then you can stick that sort of at right angles if you want to. It's 
So I just continue to do that for all my layers of the back and side pieces. The spindles can be a little delicate, so just watch out for those. And it's um, completely symmetrical, so you don't have to worry whether you, you know, kept the left side pieces all on one side and the right, it doesn't matter. So do that for all of the back pieces if you want to do this method. Next I get all the seat layers. I've got five layers here. On the original version in brown for my prototype I did three and I don't think that the three layers was thick enough. I felt that the five maybe were too thick so I've taken one away and I've got four here. What I'm trying to show you here is sometimes you'll get a sort of raised lip where the knife has cut through the craft board. It's a good idea to get all of the raised lips sort of facing the same way so that when you glue it together they don't have two lips touching and then that creates a bit of a gap. So if you can see the difference, layer them all up the same way. And what we do now is glue all of the layers of everything together. So decide if you want three or four or five layers, however many you've cut. I've gone for four layers again here for the legs. Just make sure the spindles line up. And I kind of do, I glue two together and glue another two and then I glue those together to make four. Again, I'm checking here for where the raised edge is. I'll put those together and what I did with this back piece was I glued the largest pieces, so the top and the middle back frame, glued those first, leave the spindles till later. If you try and glue everything, it could get really complicated. So I just line up the top of the back frame and the middle of the back frame, glue those, press them, and then when they're dry, I go back in and glue the spindles together. And again, it's better just to deal with two layers at a time here. Trying to glue three layers or four layers of spindles can get really tricky. And the same goes for the arms, especially if you've left the arms attached. I would glue the top of the arm first and then when that's set, go back in and glue the spindles. And this is a good time to play around with different layers and the extra sort of depth pieces. Layer them up, see how thick they end up. Would you like a thicker arm on the top? either add more middle layers or more outer layers. So here are the main parts. They've been glued and pressed and they're now dry. I'm just looking at them here to make sure I'm happy with how all the edges are lined up. The first thing to do is to glue the middle of the back frame on to the middle of the back of the seat. I like to inset it just by a couple of millimetres so it doesn't go flush up with the edge at the back. And you'll see that there's, we need to curve the sort of back slightly round so that the side struts will glue onto the base as well. 
and you just do this very gently with your fingers. At this point, it's very sort of easy to bend, so do it gently so you don't get creases. But if you want to add on extra depth layers and haven't done that already, which I suddenly realised here, glue those on before you bend it and glue it. So I now go off and I glue these pieces on. Difficult to see with white on white, but it actually creates a nice line there and gives it some depth. So I'm going to do the same thing for the, the arms and also the bottom of the rockers. And it's because I press mine under a granite slab, it's always a good idea to make sure that you're only pressing the same number of layers of things together. So I did all of the four layers together. Now, because I'm gonna add one either side, that's technically six layers, I'll press all those together now. Whereas if you had a three layer and a six layer piece, it wouldn't be even across them. And the only thing to make sure is that when you're going to be gluing on one side of the rocker, for example, there, before you put the glue on, dry fit it and work out which side the glue's got to go on because there is a front and a back. Now once I've done that, I can see the layers. I don't know if you, you can see that there. And I don't like to see the layers. So I've borrowed this technique from the lovely Heather Tracy. I'll put a link to her channel below. And it's a really, really clever technique where you simply put a bead of super glue over the edge of your layers and then very quickly and lightly sprinkle some baking powder over it. This sets instantly and creates a really hard surface which you can file. You can't see it there unfortunately. I didn't know if you would be able to. So I just go around the whole piece, putting a bead of super glue and then sprinkling the baking powder over it. And Heather Tracy is an absolute master at this technique. She also uses super glue to sort of reinforce the outer layers. And it makes essentially a layers of craft board or cardstock into a functional miniature piece of furniture. Just be careful you don't glue your fingers and always work in a well ventilated area with super glue. And I also find with this technique once I start, I can't stop it. There's something very addictive about it. And once it, it dries instantly, you can file it down to smooth it down if you like. And then what I found is, for sometimes if they're too, um, it's too intricate to be able to file, you can just put a straight bead of super glue over that edge. And because super glue is self leveling, it actually forms a really nice smooth edge without having to sand it. So here I'm just going to go around all my leading edges now. I'm going to do the arms, the armrests. Um, so I'll speed this bit up, but it's whichever edge you, you'd like to see smoother and not the layers on.
So here you see I've just taken a piece of sandpaper, I'm lightly sanding it down. If there's any super glue spilled over, I sand that off as well. And you can just keep going, you could, you could add another layer of super glue if it's not quite the shape that you like, or if you haven't quite got enough baking powder on there. And just keep going till you're happy with it. So now my additional outer layers have dried. I've just got the heart that I want to stick on the front. I eyeball this. You can see it better in the brown there rather than the white on white. I haven't yet done it on the back, but on the white one I decided to add the heart to the front and the back. So I glue those on and press them. So the rockers, I like to glue the cross struts onto the rockers first. You can see they're gently tapered there, wider at the front, narrower at the back. And I tend to put them midway in the sort of lower part of the chair sort of leg strut, whatever that's called. You can measure it, you can eyeball it. Ideally, you just want to get it in the same place on either side. So I just kind of think roughly where I'm going to put that. The same sort of distance front and back, so it's in the middle. I'd say you'd probably want to go at least halfway down the leg or lower because the top of the chair supports it where it's glued on at the top. So you're just trying to give it some more support further down. I just use super glue for this one. Make sure it's central and at sort of upright at 90 degrees. I glue the back one on, so making sure we've got the longer one at the front and the shorter one at the back. Do the same again with super glue. And then once that's set, I glue the other leg on, or the other rocker on I should say. You could measure with a ruler and mark exactly where to put them. I glue the front one first and then the back one. I don't try and do both together. And there you can see they're glued and set. They're slightly flexible at this stage. You, so you, if they weren't quite square, you could sort of wiggle it sideways. But ideally get it as square as you can. You've got some movement. And we don't put it onto the seat at the moment. Here I'm just dry fitting it so that I'm happy that all four corners will fit on the seat. So I'll leave that to one side and work on the back first. So in this version, I'm just working with the back. For the brown seat, I would have had the side arms attached at this point. This bit is the same for both ways though, so we're just going to concentrate with gluing the middle or the bottom of the middle of the back onto the back of the middle of the seat base. You can just slightly move the struts out of the way I do use a ruler here to get the exact middle of the seat. So 
I've just got a couple of mil in. I'll put a bead of super glue there. And press it in place. Had a little bit too much super glue, so I'll just dab that off. And again, get it as upright as you can, but this will still be flexible backwards and forwards. Hold it in position. And just press it down so you've got a really sort of no gaps in your, in your glue or between the two pieces. So now we can curve the top, just a gentle curve. And we just curve it enough so that we can bring round the outside struts and glue them. And you'll see there's a little bump in the back of the seat. That's kind of where we're aiming at here. If you were making the version with the arms still attached, you would twist the arms round at this point to create that curve in the back strut. You would put the glue as you do here on this strut, but you would twist the whole of the side arm in and hold that arm there whilst the glue set to hold that lovely curve. The great thing about super glue is it sets very quickly. You can go back in and put a little another dot in to reinforce if there's a gap, but I'm going to be spraying this anyway with the white gloss afterwards so you won't see the sort of extra bead of super glue. If you are making the version with the arms attached at this point, I would also now go and glue the front strut of the arm onto the front of the chair and that will support that back strut while it dries. But this is the sort of, I'd say the easier version to do. And you've got less pieces to worry about. So you go and do the exact same on the other side. Make sure they're equidistant. And I've gone and got my sort of smaller applicator here just to squeeze a little bead of super glue into the bottom of that strut. So these smaller, thinner struts, you can position them where you like. You could maybe have them clumped together more in the middle or with an equal distance between them. And again, once you're happy where they are, just put a little bit of super glue on the bottom and it will set them in place. I just work on one at a time. You could use a slower setting glue, that's completely up to you. Just 
work your way around all the spindles. And if you had the side arms attached at this point, you would just continue round to do the other two little spindles in the side arms. So now we're going to glue the side arms on so they're perpendicular to the back piece. And you see there, if they're straight, they, they don't sort of look quite right. So we're going to bend them, just put a slight curve in it again. And just take note of where the front, sort of the larger strut, naturally sits when you've got the, the back of the arm on the back of the, of the chair there. And so we're going to glue the front strut and the back of the arm in place first and then do the smaller struts afterwards. So I'm just noting there that the front strut just sits behind the, where the, the shape of the seat goes in. Get that piece right first. And that's the great thing with sort of the flexibility of the craft board. We can work with one section at a time and then you can just bend bits in and out of the way and glue them individually. So I'm happy with the front strut. I'm now going to put a dot of super glue on the back of the armrest. Can't, no, we can see that. And just pulled back the back of the chair slightly to allow a gap. Sorry, you can't see this. I'm having to look at it close up myself and I've just aimed the back of the armrest in the middle of that strut on the back of the chair. Here I'm just fiddling where I'd like to put the struts sort of at equal distances and set in from the edge the same as the front strut. Apply a dot of super glue again. Do one strut at a time if it's easier. And press down gently and bring the bottom of the strut down onto the base. It's worth mentioning here, if you've got joins that you don't feel are drying quick enough, or you've got little gaps, just use the baking powder again, it'll quickly set the joint and it'll also fill in if there's a slight gap. So now we do the same for the other side, put the other armrest on.
So now we take the sort of rocker and leg structure and just dry fit it to the chair base, making sure that we've got the front and the back the right way round. The front slightly wider than the back. Just eyeball it, measure it if you want to, work out exactly where you'd like the top of each of the legs to fit on the underneath of the base of the seat. Again, I only worked with two legs at a time here and I did the front legs first, making sure they're inset, the same from the front and the side. and then just put a dot extra around if there's any gaps. and then double check that the backs are exactly where you'd like them. As you can see, they are quite flexible, so make sure that they're where you'd like them to be before you put the glue on. And then put these dots of super glue to hold them in place. So if you've got any little lumps and bumps or extra bits of glue that you don't want, just take a file, a piece of sandpaper, an emery board, and just neaten up any edges. And then it's up to you whether you want to varnish it, spray paint it. I quickly give this a couple of gloss coats of white spray paint, whatever you want to do. And there it is, the finished project. It's so cute, it's functional, and you can dress it up or down to fit in with your existing colour scheme. Here I paired it with the white single bed frame for a really cosy but contemporary look. And you can mix and match the styles and colours for more variety. And you can go all out matching wood for a really cosy cabin vibe. Thank you for joining me today. I certainly had fun making these and I hope you do too. Don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't done already and join our monthly membership group if you want to get the FCVG files for free every month. Take care and I'll see you soon.